Welcome to AP Biology Videos. This is Mr. Hall, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about water potential. If you're familiar with osmosis, then you understand that osmosis is simply the diffusion of water, and that is how water actually moves from areas where it is highly concentrated to areas where it is lowly concentrated. And an area where water is highly concentrated we call hypotonic. And an area where it is lowly concentrated, we call hypertonic. And that sounds kind of weird, but you have to remember that tonic means solute. So hypo, of course, means low, but tonic means solute. So hypotonic is a low solute environment, and therefore it is a high water environment. And hypertonic is the opposite. Um, using just these words when we talk about diffusion of water works until we actually look at real living systems because osmotic pressure, which is just simply the pressure that is exerted by um, the process of osmosis, is not the only factor at play when we're talking about water movement in living organisms. So one good example of this would be in a plant cell. So here's actually some cells of an uh, the leaf of a plant, an aquatic plant, and you can see the cell wall outlined here. And you can see the cell membrane, and you can see all of these little chloroplasts, they're all green um, inside the cell. Well, if we put this cell in a liquid solution, and it has some tonicity of salt and water, say it's some type of salt solution, uh, there may be pressure uh, for water to go into the cell. So if this is in a hypotonic environment, then water is going to want to diffuse inside the cells. And that's going to create pressure. That's actually going to exert a force on the cell wall. And we can't just put an infinite amount of water inside this cell because eventually it's going to get full. And if you'll recall, this cell is made of cell walls made of cellulose and that's nice and hard. And so this cell is only going to be able to hold so much water. A good illustration would be with this would be something like a water balloon. If you were trying to blow up a water balloon, you can only put so much water in that balloon um, until you're going to eventually get to a point where there's so much pressure that no more water can come in. Now, another thing that you have to take into consideration, if I have this water balloon and then I untie this knot, water's going to start streaming out. Why? Well, because the balloon has elasticity, and so the balloon, if you, if you remember from your basic physics, for every react or every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The water is putting a force on this balloon, and the balloon is likewise putting a force back on the water. So if I untie this balloon, water comes shooting out. Cells do the same thing. So there's another pressure that is going to be at work here when we're talking about water trying to get into cells. So let's look at an illustration that can help us out. Um, this is just a setup of tubing that a lot of people use when they want to study uh, osmosis and diffusion. And just long story short, here's this tube. And what it has inside of it is over here you have pure water and then you have some molarity concentration. Molarity is just uh, a way of viewing concentration, kind of like percent. And there's solute in there, so water is going to have a tendency to diffuse through the semipermeable membrane and raise the water level. So water is going to go from an area of high to low. But what if we were to apply some pressure? For example, if we took some type of piston and pushed it down in this water and we applied a force in the down direction, water is not going to be able to diffuse over because you have this pressure pushing against the water. So even though we have on this side, we have a hypertonic environment and water wants to diffuse through there, because you have this pressure, water cannot do so. And that would kind of be like the pressure of the cell wall pushing on the contents of the cell. It would also kind of be like our water balloon example. Um, the balloon itself is going to push on that water as we try to fill it up, and so it's only going to be able to get so full. Now, if we add additional pressure, we can actually do what we call reverse osmosis. And so um, that's just illustrated in this example C here. Uh, even though this is a hypertonic environment and water wants to naturally diffuse through the membrane to the right here, 
if I were to actually take this uh, plunger and push down really hard, I could actually push water against the concentration gradient. In other words, I would be making water move not from high to low concentration, but from low to high. I could also do that a different way. I could take a piston and put it down here in the water and I could pull it upwards and create negative pressure, kind of like using a plunger in a toilet and pull water up. And so even though water naturally would want to move to the right here, it would want to move to that hypertonic environment where you have all of this solute, water would actually move in the opposite direction of what it would normally want to. And that's because of this added pressure. So this idea of water potential is uh, designed to get at this problem of, of that pressure. So let's look at the water potential formula very quickly. Um, this is the symbol for water potential. And water potential is going to be equal to what we call pressure potential plus solute potential. And if we wanted to uh, define these terms, we could, we could say that pressure potential is equal to the pressure that is exerted um, in the cell and that could be by the cell wall just like for example in the illustration of the balloon the amount of pressure of that balloon pushing in on the water that would be our pressure potential and then our solute potential is basically uh, what we would call osmotic pressure or in other words it is pressure that is caused by osmosis so water we said has a tendency to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So that is the pressure of solute potential. So basically, um, when you put a cell in a hypotonic environment, water is going to naturally want to move into that cell. So that tendency of water to move in creates uh, pressure, and that's why the water goes in, and that is what we call solute potential. Now let's break this down even further. So I'm going to write up here at the top our equation. So we have water potential is equal to pressure potential plus solute potential. And let's talk about practically what these things mean. Um, if I have a beaker of water and it is open on top, there is no, and I put maybe a, uh, say I put an animal cell in it. Uh, animal cell doesn't have a cell wall. There's going to be no pressure potential. So pressure potential equals zero because I'm not exerting any force. I am not pushing water into this cell. If I were to take some type of stopper and push it down into this water, I'd be forcing water into the cell, and that is going to be uh, pressure potential. So most of the time, pressure potential is going to be equal to zero. If we're talking about a plant cell, and here's the cell wall, pressure potential is not going to be zero because there's going to be pressure exerted by this cell wall pushing in so I can only put so much water in there. Solute potential on the other hand is really where we're going to be um, uh, working most of the time with our mathematics. The solute potential of pure water, so something that is 100 percent H2O, the solute potential is zero. And what does that actually mean? That means that pure water has zero tolerance, zero ability to take on water. So, for example, if I have some cells floating around in this water fluid, and let's say this is 100% H2O, the only way water can move is into the cells. Because this water has zero solute potential. It has zero ability to take on more water. Water cannot possibly come out of these cells because we're already as high a percentage of water as we can get. Now let's say I were to take a little bit of salt and add it to this beaker. What I would be doing there is I would be lowering the solute potential. So solute potential is either going to be zero if it's pure water or solute potential is going to be some negative number like maybe negative two. So if I put some salt in here, um, I, there's a formula that we'll learn about later where we can calculate solute potential, but it will create a negative solute potential. And what that means is that now there is potential 
for this beaker to take water out of the cells because if I make a hypertonic environment by adding salt, water can now come out of the cells. So let's do a quick recap. And this is just an introduction. We're going to do another video that shows how to actually calculate water potential. So to kind of do a recap, if we look at this particular diagram here, uh, what we see is a few different scenarios. Inside this tube here, there is a liquid, and it is a hypertonic liquid. So it wants to take on water. And so water is going to diffuse into this tube, and this is going to cause the water level to rise. Now, that's what we are used to knowing, and that's what we learned in Biology 1. But what we're adding is this idea of added pressure, of pressure potential. So this right here could represent our solute potential, which is what we're used to, our osmosis. The more solute we have, if we put salt in something, in fact, if we put even more salt into this water, uh, in, inside this container, it's going to have a greater tendency to take on water, and therefore the solute potential is going to become more negative. Pressure potential is kind of the new thing, and so that just says, hey, even though this is a hypertonic environment, if I put pressure, uh, the tendency for water to diffuse into this container is going to go down because I have this pressure that's keeping it out. Um, in the next video, we will learn exactly how to calculate water potential mathematically. And so again, our formula for water potential, here's our symbol for water potential. Water potential is equal to the pressure potential, so that's how much pressure is being uh, exerted on that cell or on that container. We're pushing water into something or we're pulling water out, not by osmosis, but by force. So it's our pressure potential plus our solute potential, and that gives us our water potential. And water potential, again, is the potential for a liquid to take on water.